I think most people are not aware of the raw number of microbes that are on them and in them and that they encounter every day. There's an often cited statistic that we're outnumbered by 10 to 1 of bacteria to human cells in our body. So I always like to say in the democracy of your human body you would be a minority party if all the cells had a vote you wouldn't get to decide where to go. Dr. Christopher Mason is no stranger to microbes, the nearly invisible microorganisms that make up the bulk of life on Earth. For more than a year, he and his team of researchers from Cornell University have been working to identify the microbes in a special test tube that millions of people share every day, the New York City subway system. There is, a, I think, a very universal experience of, of being on the subway and touching something and wondering what's there. It's one of the most highly trafficked areas in really the world. There's about 5.5 million people going through the subway system every single day. And so you really couldn't imagine a more centralized location where people are sharing DNA. It's almost like uh, exploring an entirely new continent that has never really been studied before. Dr. Mason calls this effort the Pathomap Project, and it's the first of its kind. His goal? map the microbes of every subway station in New York City. And some of the preliminary findings might surprise you. There's a hint of bubonic plague uptown, meningitis in midtown, and staph infections throughout the boroughs. But most are benign. Everywhere you look, there also are the bacteria that keep New York City livable by sopping up hazardous chemicals and naturally metabolizing our toxic waste. We began in the summer of 2013, so we wanted to do all 468 subway stations in triplicate, which we completed last summer. And we have over 3,200 swabs from across the subway station, and we've uh, sequenced over 600 of them and are in the process of extracting DNA and sequencing all the remainder of those uh, samples. So we found an, an extraordinary panoply of different types of organisms. We've seen uh, uh, over 200 different species of bacteria in the subway. Mason and his team have uncovered how we seed the subways every day with bacteria from the food we eat, the pets or plants we keep, and our sneezes and sniffles. They can follow the trail of bacteria created by our appetite for pizza. Microbes associated with mozzarella cheese, pepperoni sausage, and other ingredients turn up in abundance at almost every subway stop. Go to the next station, you know, come, come around and come back. Okay. really wanted to, to focus on the high traffic area, so this includes basically the seats or the railings as you're riding the subway, what do you grab, so a lot of swabbing up here. The wooden benches or metal benches that are in the subway station. The turnstile as you walk through, and as well as the kiosk where you go to buy your tickets. And we found an amazing amount of bacteria on the actual turnstile or on the kiosk. Uh, of things that you wouldn't normally think, like uh, sometimes normal things like lactobacillus or healthy bacteria, but also uh, Enterococcus bacillus or fecal bacteria, as well as a lot of rat and mouse DNA. So essentially all the rats and mice that you might see in the subway as the train goes through, it kicks up the air and then it coats the entire subway station like snow uh, of, of their DNA. It takes the lab workers at least three minutes to gather enough DNA for each sample. Commuters, normally a blasé bunch, have had mixed reactions. We've seen a lot of things in the subway. We've been accused of spreading HIV. We've been accused of looking for alien DNA. Uh, one student in the lab, uh, Liz, she even got a hug from someone who thanked her for cleaning, as if you would clean with a Q-tip. It must be like the hazing for the MTA, like you will clean the subway with just this one Q-tip. But the, the other direction is that people have become completely, uh, basically fearful and say, I don't want to know anything that you find. I don't want to know at all. So there's a lot of fear, I think, about what, what is out there, what are the bacteria that are present. I would rather us confront our environment with knowledge rather than fear. And so in this case, we want to say that data wins in the sense that the vast majority of bacteria we find are, are good bacteria. And so I think people really should not worry about what's down there. One of the most important notes of this entire research is that we're surrounded by hundreds of millions of trillions of bacteria, and yet most of us are just fine. They're just us. They're not uh, this alien invasion force of, of evil bacteria. They're really our friends more than our foes. The Pathomat project and all the knowledge we've accrued has, to some degree, altered my behavior. I actually have become a bit more cavalier in how I ride the subway station. So even if I feel something weird when I'm holding, I'm riding in, if it seems a little odd and sticky, I can, well, I think, well, just, you know, I can just fix my hair with that. That's fine. It doesn't matter. 
Humor aside, Dr. Mason and his colleagues across the country believe this work could fundamentally change the way we monitor and respond to public health and safety issues. Everything from combating bioterrorism to tracking dangerous diseases as in the current Ebola crisis. So where this is all going is that potentially we could imagine you would use all this molecular data from surfaces, from tran transit areas, from hospitals. You could essentially congregate and collect all that data to find out at a very precise molecular level when anything dangerous is occurring. And so you could imagine a smarter world or at least a smart city where you would be able to track and even prevent people from you know, at least going more into an area that we know is having an infectious disease problem and potentially save a lot of lives that way. It is a revealing glimpse into the future of public health. Across the country, researchers are combining microbiology, genomics, and population genetics on a massive scale to identify the microbiomes of entire cities. With the Pathomap project, New York has become a test tube for the big data of bacteria.